Red paper lanterns brighten Japan's streets after dark. They mark the locations of the much-loved Japanese-style pubs called izakaya. Inside, you'll see colleagues stopping for drinks together on their way home from work. Couples on a date. All kinds of get-togethers. Izakaya are where people build relationships over drinks. These pubs are renowned for their extensive menus. You can choose from a tremendous variety of alcoholic beverages and Japanese dishes. Sake spills over the lip of the glass, but it's not a mistake. This is an izakaya tradition. For centuries, izakaya has served as places where people mingle across barriers of age and rank. Recently, new types of pubs have appeared on the scene to cater to increasingly diverse preferences. On this edition of Begin Japanology, we look at Japanese-style pubs, izakaya. We'll explore the food, drink and camaraderie that give them such widespread appeal. Hello and welcome to Begin Japanology. I'm Peter Barakan. Our theme for today is izakaya, which I shall translate for the purposes of this show as pubs, although, as you'll realize, they're a little different from what we call pubs in England. I'm in the Shinbashi area of central Tokyo. It's a commercial area where hordes of Japan's corporate warriors come to unwind after an exacting day at work. As you'll see from the looks of this little alley here, just about every building is a drinking establishment. It's said that there are over 150,000 izakaya all over Japan. Why so many? And what are they exactly? To find out, I'm going to go on my own little pub crawl this evening. While I get started, let's get an overview. As night falls in the city, izakaya spring to life. These are drinking places for the masses, serving up seasonal food and alcohol at reasonable prices. This is our boss. It's common in Japan for corporate workers to accompany their bosses, colleagues and top clients to an izakaya on the way home from work. Alcohol helps the conversation to flow. Izakaya are an important venue for cultivating relationships and connections. <laughs> Let's look inside a typical izakaya. Izakaya come in all sizes, big and small. Many consist of a bar plus a handful of tables. Customers pack the busiest establishments. It's a place for men and women, young and old, to share good times. Izakaya offer lots of different alcoholic beverages, and prices are reasonable. Beer, wine, whiskey, cocktails, whatever you drink, you'll be sure to find an izakaya that serves it. And, of course, they also serve a variety of Japanese drinks. This is called chuhai. The Japanese distilled spirit shochu, cut with soda water. In the early post-war years, the shochu available wasn't tasted. To make it more palatable, pubs cut it with soda water and flavoured it with lemon or lime. This created a light, refreshing drink. And here is a beer-like carbonated beverage. This also dates from the early post-war years when beer was pricey. It was developed as a cheap substitute made from hops. It's drunk mixed with shochu. Sake is made by fermenting rice. There are many ways to drink it. In summer, people drink it chilled to fend off the heat. In winter, sake is drunk warm. 
In an izakaya, you can have your drink of choice just the way you like it. The food menus are also extensive. Many izakaya offer dozens of choices. At an izakaya, each individual dish is usually small, so it's great for people who just want a light nibble with their drink, as well as those who want to fill up with a meal. Let's look at some typical items on an izakaya menu. This is fermented squid. Seaweed pickled in vinegar. Soybeans boiled in salty water are a pub staple. A salt grilled sari might be shared among several people. Chazke, rice with green tea poured over it, often marks the end of the meal. But it's not just Japanese fare. There are often dishes like croquettes, gratin, and pizza. Even Chinese-style fried chicken. Japanese pub fare is eclectic. Some pubs have built a reputation on specific dishes. Here, they serve grilled chicken chunks on sticks. Bite-sized pieces of meat are skewered and grilled with sauce or salt seasoning. It's not just chicken. Sometimes grilled beef and pork are used as well. This kind of kebab is great with any alcoholic beverage. Here's a pub featuring orden, a selection of stewed items. Typical ingredients are cakes of processed fish, blocks of tofu and seasonal vegetables. The broth is based on seafood stock and soy sauce. This type of food is an izakaya favourite. This izakaya offers charcoal grilled seafood and vegetables. The ingredients are simple and the honest to goodness regional flavours have many fans. Japanese pubs come in all shapes and sizes with all kinds of menus. Izakaya are designed so that people can always find the kind of food they want and enjoy eating and drinking in a pleasant, cosy atmosphere. This is a popular izakaya in the Shimbashi area which fills up from very early in the evening. I'm going to go inside and find out why it's so popular. <laughs> This establishment has a very extensive menu. Have a look up here. And you'll notice that there are no prices here on the menu, and there's good reason for that, which is that everything is the same price. Every item on the menu is 300 yen. They've put out some of the more popular items on the menu here on the counter for us. How many items do you have on the menu altogether? We always have between 50 and 60. And how long does the preparation take? Five or six hours. Because they're all homemade. And why did you make everything the same price? Then I think our customers can choose more freely. The whole idea is that customers should just drop by casually any time they feel like it. But izakaya do have their own systems and customs which reflect Japanese ideas about hospitality and interpersonal relations. Let's find out a little bit more about that. Various customs are observed at izakaya. First, as soon as you sit down, a small appetizer is served. This touch ensures customers have something to eat even before their first ordered dish arrives. In this case, it's skipjack tuna. Usually served as sashimi, for this dish a fillet has been cubed and boiled with Japanese leeks.
We tried different ideas. This one uses Japanese leaks. It fills up the time before your order is served. So the flavor needs to be quite light. There are customs involving the drinks themselves too. When you order sake cold, the server will sometimes pour out enough liquid to overflow the glass and spill into the wooden box it rests in. This makes you feel that you're getting a kind of bonus. First you drink a little out of the glass. Then you pour the contents of the box into the glass, refilling it with sake. The next custom is observed between drinkers. It's customary to pour drinks for each other, and this promotes social interaction. Whether among a group of men or between a man and a woman, it's a wordless way to express respect or affection. Perhaps it has something to do with the Japanese tendency not to verbalize feelings. Special occasions such as welcome parties, going away parties and year-end parties often involve a drinking session at an izakaya. These are occasions when everyone drinks together on an equal footing. Differences in rank between boss and subordinates are set aside. This is an old custom in Japan. Drinking creates opportunities for people to speak their minds. At the izakaya, they can drop the polite front they use in workaday life, at least to a certain extent. It's great how everyone loosens up and pours out their hearts. It's a special time we all share together, as equals. I love that. You don't have to worry about disturbing other people by talking too loud because the whole place is noisy. Customs also come into play when settling the bill. Groups of drinkers often split the tap. It's 2,000 yen each. When colleagues or friends go out to the pub, it's very common to split the tab evenly among all those in the party so that everyone pays the same. We all pay equally. It keeps everything even and fair. Now and then someone will drink too much or eat a lot, but uh, that's just understood. Maybe someone who's not drinking much will eat more to even things out and so on. This way just seems to make things fair for everybody. Izakaya have such customs to help make sure that everybody has a good time. Their rules founded on being considerate towards others. And that's why generations of Japanese people have treasured and maintained these customs. OK, on to my second stop for tonight. And this place has no tables. It's all standing, which makes it somewhat close to an English pub. These kind of stand-only bars have a really casual feel about them. You can walk in here off the street just by yourself and feel totally at home. Have something to drink, have something to eat, just stand by yourself or you can strike up a conversation with the person next to you. It's all very free and easy. Izakaya have been around now for hundreds of years. They've had to go through changes, of course, through the years to keep attracting customers as customs changes from period to period. It's believed that izakaya first appeared in Japan at the end of the 16th century, in the city of Edo, as Tokyo was called back then. Laborers came from all across Japan to construct a castle for the shogun in Edo. To 
to slake their thirst, sake merchants would set aside part of the shop to serve drinks. These pictures show what izakaya looked like in the mid-18th century. In those days, a 1.8-litre bottle of sake cost about half a day's wages. Even so, many people gathered at these pubs. Some drank standing up, others sat on benches. The customers included samurai. In those days, Japan had a strict social hierarchy, but samurai and commoners mingled at izakaya which served as a venue for interaction across social classes. In the late 19th century, Japanese society rapidly westernized and western drinks became popular. Beer halls and grilled chicken bars made their appearance as pubs evolved into a variety of forms. More people than ever flocked to izakaya. Right after the Second World War, Japan suffered food shortages. But even when people could barely survive, izakaya didn't vanish. As the nation rebuilt, little pubs popped up everywhere. People gathered at them and encouraged each other to stick it out, with everyone hoping for a better tomorrow. Izakaya were also important centers of information exchange. In recent years, many new types of izakaya have cropped up to serve increasingly diverse consumer preferences. This izakaya is located right on the platform at Nagoya Station in central Japan. Office workers can enjoy eating and drinking as they wait for their train home. Quick and cheap, it's a great spot to catch up with friends. This izakaya evokes the Warring States period, the heyday of the samurai. It was inspired by a recent surge of public interest in history. It's fun for everyone to feel as if they slipped back in time. This is a folk music pub targeting people approaching retirement age. Members of this generation get together to play the songs of their youth. It's all about connecting with memories of a bygone era and with other people who share them. In the 400 years since they first appeared, izakaya have evolved along with Japanese society. One thing has stayed the same though. Izakaya have always transcended barriers of social and occupational status and encouraged social interaction. This style of izakaya is called robatayaki, and that means that the food is grilled over charcoal and then served to you here in front of the counter. Normally they would have the grill right inside here, but this place has converted their space into what sometimes becomes a performance space. Every week on Tuesdays and Saturdays they have a practitioner of rakugo, which is the Japanese traditional um, storytelling art. Come, here, come in here and perform right inside here, in front of the customers, as they eat and drink. And, of course, fans of Rakugo come in their droves to share the experience. Recently, a kind of niche marketing is becoming common in the izakaya field, appealing to a certain age group or a group of people who have a particular preference. So you have your traditional izakaya, you have the ones which serve, for example, regional foods. Uh, for example, this one where I am now serves a lot of food from Hokkaido. But however much variety there is, there are some constants. You drink, you eat, and you have fun and talk to your friends, basically. Okay, let's move on now and take a look at a story about a particular man which might get you thinking about what the roots behind Facebook might be. The Shimbashi district of Tokyo. This bustling pub attracts a lot of office workers in the evening. 
Its appeal is not limited to food and drink. These notebooks are another drawn. Found it! It's here! There are around 800 notebooks here, each labelled with the name of a high school somewhere in Japan. Customers write in the notebook of the school they went to. Memories, recent happenings, anything they like. The notebooks serve as a medium of interaction between customers. The pub started keeping the notebooks in 1987. Japan was in the midst of a booming bubble economy. In those days, people wrote things like, our group is growing like crazy, the sky's the limit. Then, the bubble burst. The day after tomorrow, I'm being laid off from the oil company where I work. In 2009, with the global economic crisis raging, I'm 44. If you have a job opening, please contact me. The notebooks reveal how customers really felt as they lived through boom and bust times. One man had his life changed by one of the notebooks. His name is Naoya Takahashi, a regular at the pub. The financial company he runs took a huge hit from the financial crisis. Takahashi poured out his troubles in the pages of the notebook for the school he went to, Niigata High School. My company is in serious trouble. We might not be able to pay the employees next month. This might be my last visit to this pub. Takahashi founded the company seven years ago. He recruited trusted friends, but when the economic downturn struck, the firm began to struggle financially. Takahashi was overwhelmed with guilt at having let his colleagues down, but he had nobody to turn to. It uh, seems strange, but when I have things that I can't talk to anybody about, you know, uh, painful things, griping about it in the notebook helps me feel better. Several days later, Takahashi opened the notebook at the pub and saw that someone else had written in it. My name is Junichi Kamei. I graduated from Niigata High School in 1970. I have worked for a number of Japanese and Western financial institutions over the years. Perhaps I can be of some assistance. Feel free to contact me. A message from someone he had never met. Takahashi decided to meet the writer of the message, Junichi Kamei. Oh, uh, thank you very much for meeting me. When he heard of Takahashi's deep distress, Kamei felt he just had to get involved. So in your company, everyone's pulling together then. That's good. Uh, yes, but uh, the worst case scenario is uh, that we all go down with the ship. I've been involved in two or three companies that went bankrupt. Everyone has that kind of experience sometime, especially in finance. Any children? Still in middle school. So you need to hold out for another decade. Kamei offered thoughtful advice to Takahashi, even though they were meeting for the very first time. It filled Takahashi with determination to keep going.
Later, with the help of another firm, Takahashi managed to found a new company and re-employ his colleagues. Even though we went to the same school, he was a complete stranger. I'm amazed he was willing to meet me. It uh, was all thanks to that notebook. It made me feel that the world isn't such a bad place after all. People talk about human mercy. Well, uh, I, I really felt that. Because Izakaya are places where everyone can relax and be themselves, they are ideal for forging close connections with other people. As is well known, the Japanese business world is extremely hierarchical, and that, of course, breeds a certain amount of stress. But when you come to an izakaya, all considerations of status are pretty much left outside. Once you walk inside, everybody drinks and eats on an equal footing. And once you spend an evening drinking with somebody, that relationship is always going to become a little bit closer. And although they're not going to be world-changing events, there are all kinds of little human dramas happening in these places every evening. I'll see you again next time.